morning and thank you for tuning in to another Pineapple Bytes video training session. In this video training session, we'll review some network troubleshooting tips for your Aloha point of sale system. As you can see here, we have a document done up which we can send to you if you request. But this will review some of the, the key things you should look at um, if you're troubleshooting a networking issue with your point of sale system. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of review this document, kind of explain how it works. So troubleshooting your Aloha network. The most important part of your point of sale isn't exactly what you think it is. Now, what a lot of people fail to realize is that it doesn't matter how much you spend on a point of sale system. If your infrastructure with your networking is not up to par, it is not well maintained, regardless of the point of sale system you are running out there, it will fail. It will not be reliable for you. The stability will be really bad. So it's really key that you have a good understanding of how your POS communicates and to ensure that your networking devices are located in the correct spots, things are labeled correctly, wires are kept neat, um, and also good understanding you know, how, how it works in general. So here's a, a couple little things we'll talk about. So the backbone of your system is your internal network. And this consists typically of a router and possibly one or more network switches. So the router it connects your network to the internet and segregates your point of sale from other devices on your network. This could include security cameras, digital radio, other office computers, your customer Wi-Fi, and non-integrated credit and debit terminals. A switch is used to extend your internal network to more devices as many routers only have four to eight devices for ports. So a site with four terminals and a back office file server and a couple of kitchen printers can easily require more ports that are available on a standard router. So think of it as your router is your primary device and then a switch is basically used to give your rotor more ports. So the more devices that you may need to connect so they can communicate to each other, then you may need to add on a switch to your network to have available ports for those additional devices. So in kind of the diagram we have here, you can see this is a four terminal POS system with two network kitchen printers and the Aloha back office computer. So you could see right here in this example, the terminals, the back office, and kitchen printers are all supported by one networking device. Should that device fail or lose power, none of the point of sale equipment will be able to function. So you can see in this particular instance, this is most likely an eight port rotor. As you can see, there's not a switch here located anywhere, so it's just one device. So it's most likely a rotor that has eight ports. Typically, the modem from your internet service provider, eSync or Bell, will have a cable that goes into the internet port on the rotor, and that's to supply the rotor with internet. So this back office computer that is connected to this rotor is able to get on the internet and is able to have a connection to the outside world so your point of sale provider can remotely support your site. You can see here the four POS terminals have cables that run to this rotor, and each kitchen printer also has a cable that runs to this rotor. So if this device right here happens to get damaged or it goes offline or cables are unplugged, then every device that connects to this rotor is unable to communicate with each other. And that is when you start having networking issues. So if we go on to our second page here, if you have an instance where all terminals might be down. So if you ever come in and in this particular scenario, you'll see a cannot locate file server error on your screen of the point of sale terminals and a button that says make file server on all the terminals. Also your back, back office PC will not be able to access the, internet, access the internet. In this situation, you should first check your network device. Confirm it has power and the LEDs are lit up and not blinking in unison. It's typical for rotors to have LEDs on them that will blink with their activity. Generally speaking, these will blink at random rates. Some will be faster, some will be quicker. We have seen in the past where if a rotor is locked up or having issues, the lights may just be solid and stuck on 
or they may be blinking exactly all at the same time. This is usually a good indication that maybe the rotor needs to be power cycled or could quite possibly be damaged and needs to be replaced. So you can see here, if they are blinking in unison, unplug the power to the device for five seconds, then plug it back in. If this does not resolve your issue, please call our help desk for further help troubleshooting your issue. So if you ever come in and all terminals are all saying make uh, cannot locate file server and each individual terminal has a make file server button on it, that means that they're all connecting to one central device and that central device is most likely your issue. So you'll want to look there first. In other cases, you will see your terminals go to a screen that says cannot locate file server and only one terminal has the make file server button. In this case, your terminals can see each other across the network, but not the back office computer. So your first step in this situation is to confirm the back office computer is up and running, has power, is in Windows, and you don't see any arrows on it, errors on it. You can also confirm if you can browse the internet, go to a website on that computer, see if you have an active internet connection. Typically what that means is when each of these say cannot locate file server, but only one of them says has a make file server button. And that usually means that there's an issue with the back office computer or the back office computer might just not be turned on. We see this a lot with power outages where staff will come in, the terminals will have cannot locate file server. One of them has a button that says make file server. They end up going into the office and realizing that after the power outage, the main computer in the office, the back office one, didn't turn back on. They turn that back on, loads up the services, gets into the Windows operating system, and then all the point of sale terminals come up and start working again. So two different scenarios here. First one is they all have a make file server button. It's most likely an issue with your, your central networking POS rotor. Another instance is where you will come in and they'll all say cannot locate file server, but only one of them has a make file server button. And this is generally an issue with your back office computer or the connection from the back office computer to that rotor. So it could be a cabling issue as well. Maybe the cable got unplugged from the back office rotor, or maybe the line that runs from the back office to the, to the rotor, maybe that got unplugged as well. Another instance we have here is some terminals are down, others are operating normally. So typically what we'll see a lot of the times is that ideally all network lines are ran to a single location, most often in the office or a networking closet, and that's where you can find all your networking devices like the rotors or the switches. In some cases there can be multiple network devices supporting your point of sale. This can happen when existing wiring was used during the initial install or terminals and printers were added over time. Another common situation is the addition of a wireless credit or debit terminal. These often require a network connection for their base station, and if there's no line available, a switch will be added. In this case, you will see one terminal that says cannot locate file server with a make file server button, but all the other ones are working correctly. Check the status of the switch and remove the power for five seconds if needed. You should also check and confirm all cables are firmly plugged in, just in case one may have come loose when the terminal was moved or tilted. So in this particular instance here, we still have our four terminal system with our two kitchen printers and our rotor, but you could see that maybe some point along the line, uh, your payment processor came in and added in a credit and debit terminal. Now, instead of getting a wiring company to come in and run a dedicated line from your rotor out to where that pin pad is going, they decided to put in a network switch at this location. So then they could plug the terminal into the switch and the pin pad into the switch, which then communicates back to the rotor. So it's basically putting in an extension at this point so they don't have to run a whole new cable all the way out from wherever the rotor may be to this pin pad. The problem with that though, is that you've added another point of failure. So you've added in another networking device like a switch. So what can happen is if there's a power outage or this switch becomes unplugged, something like that, these two devices that are plugged into that switch will stop communicating to the rest 
of the network. So you're going to want to make sure that if you have one terminal or maybe multiple terminals that are saying cannot locate file server and they have a make file server button, but there's other terminals in your system that are working absolutely correctly, then you're going to want to look to see if you can identify where this network switch is and see if there's maybe an issue with it. Maybe power cycle it, maybe got unplugged, uh, but that's the first spot you should look when troubleshooting that particular problem. Hopefully this uh, was a good tutorial for you and gives you a little bit more understanding on things that you can look for uh, when it comes to communication issues with your point of sale. And thank you for tuning in. Have a great day.